This is a quick video demonstration of how to connect to your DVR using your iPhone. This app is called IDMSS Lite and you can find it in your app store from your iPhone. This uh, uh, software is uh, compatible with iPhone 3G, iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, and iPhone 4S. Also, you can install it on new iPods. So, there's a few things you gotta uh, take in consideration when you're trying to connect to your DVR. And the first thing is your DVR has to be connected on your local Wi-Fi and your phone has to be connected on, uh, you know, Wi-Fi connection on your uh, router as well, on the same router where the DVR is, okay? So for this demonstration, I'm going to be uh, connecting my phone into my local Wi-Fi where uh, that DVR is connected. So you go to settings, you go to Wi-Fi, and the one I'm going to choose is this one over here. Right now it says connected. Uh, right now basically I'm inside the same network as the DVR. You can tell that I'm connected to the Wi-Fi because there is a little icon right there. Okay. The next thing is uh, connect to uh, the DVR. So you open the software. It's called IDMSS Lite. It's free. And you will be presented with this main menu. So what you do is you click device manager, you click add, and then you will be presented with this window that says new device. You have to put a name for that connection. So for you to identify what kind of connection you're uh, uh, getting into because there is uh, an inside uh, IP address from the DVR and there is an outside IP address that you will be able to connect to it when you are inside or outside the network. So for me to identify this, I'm just going to use office in, okay? I will use my internal IP of the DVR. As you know, our DVRs have uh, a default IP address. All of our DVRs, MVRs, hybrid DVRs, megapixel cameras, they all share the same IP address, which is 192.168.1.108. If your network schema is within that range or within that kind of network, you will be fine. Okay, once you have your DVR connected to your router, uh, the next thing is, you know, make sure that your phone is connected to your local Wi-Fi where that DVR is connected to, and then just add the internal IP of the DVR. Okay. The next step will be adding the port. By default, on their new device window, the port will be uh, pre-populated already. So it's populated for you, so you don't have to, you know, put it if you don't know it. But by default, it's 37777. Then you have to use uh, an administrator account for you to access the DVR. You cannot use the 68s or the 66s that you will see from the drop-down of the DVR in the main menu when you're trying to log in. You have to use the admin admin, or you can create a new user with admin rights. Okay, and my demonstration, I already created a new one. So I'm just going to put, yes, I can spell it. Okay, password, exactly the same as you created that user with. It's case sensitive, so you have to make sure that it, you, know, you type it exactly the same. The channel amount is the amount of channels that your DVR has. So my demonstration, this DVR that I'm connected to is a 16 channel. So I'm okay there. You can change it if you type there. You can delete it. You can type uh, a channel or as many channels your DVR has. In this case, again, 16 channel. Click save. And I already add this connection. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip this, uh, the next part, and I'm going to add my external connection of uh, my network. So I have, I already forward the ports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another connection and I'm going to label it office away. So I will use this particular connection when I'm away from the office. So uh, my external IP, uh, you can go to a computer within the same network 
as your DVR, and you can pull canyouseeme.org or IP uh, chicken or what is my IP.com, and it's going to tell you what your external IP is. On my demonstration, my external IP is 50.73.6.13. Again, the port is 37777. Username is guest. Password the same. Lowercase. 16 channel. Click save. Okay? So, when I'm away from my office, I will use this connection. When I'm inside the office, I will use this connection. I can also use this connection when I'm inside the office, but my Wi-Fi on my phone has to be off. Unless that you have multiple networks, like I do, on my office I have multiple networks. There are like different routers, uh, different providers that we have. And I can be within the same network, but I have to be connected to those to a completely separate Wi-Fi. Not in the same network, because if I use this, and I'm within the same network, I will not be able to connect. Unless that I use a 3G, you know, the 3G connection, I turn off uh, the Wi-Fi on, uh, uh, on my phone, which you can do. Okay, so the next step will be uh, go back here to home, and then I can go to real-time monitor. It will be presented with this. These are the four views that you can use or you can have on your phone. You can only view only four cameras on your phone. And here on the bottom you have uh, this little dots. It will show you that there is more menus. You have up to four menus over there that you can scroll and you can see the menus. The menus will appear every time you scroll. Okay? So for you to add the cameras, you can just simply click the plus and choose the DVR you want to connect to. In my case, because I'm connected within the same network, I will choose channel one. Oh, I got an issue with that. Let me make sure that you have your information correct. I'm just gonna add the admin account. And then you click add in your cameras. I'm just going to use this one. There you go. So there are my four cameras I can view. Now there's a cool thing, a cool feature on this new app that you can add groups. For example, and uh, also you can now drag the windows where you want to place them. Okay, so you can add the cameras however you want, and then if you don't like how they are arranged, you just basically drag them. Very easy to use. It's very, very cool feature right there. So I'm going to add this to a group. That's going to be my main cameras if I want to. Okay, so what I do is after I open the cameras, I just click the, the little star, and it's going to ask me to put a name. I'm just going to label it Make Cams. Okay. So these four cameras are going to be my main cameras. So the next step will be to add a second group. Because what you can do is when you have multiple groups, this little scroll right here allows you to scroll by the uh, group of cameras that you just created. Okay? So if you have multiple groups, you just scroll there. Right now I have only one group, and it will connect again to the same uh, group that I had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close these cameras and add a different group now. For you to close each camera, you can go to each square and click this little square right there, or you can hold it and it will close them all at once. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second group. Uh, let's say right here. Oops. Let's say uh, this one. This one, 
and I'm going to add this one, for example. Okay? Then I'm going to create a different group. I'm going to call it sec second cams or second cams. Click OK. Now I can scroll here and I can use the scroller for you to connect to the previous group. Very simple. So you can have multiple groups of four cameras and label it however you want them and uh, connect to it. Just as easy as that. Very cool. So uh, I can actually, uh, you know, double tap that. Uh, and, you know, this particular camera, it's a PDZ. I don't have connected there, but you can uh, move the camera if you want to by going, scrolling here. You have all of the PDZ tool options right there. Okay, you can tap again to go back to uh, the main screen. You can take a snapshot if you want to, right here. If you have audio on that camera, you can just basically click on it and you, you will be able to hear audio. I know I have a camera here that has audio. This one over here. It has audio right there and you can hear, nobody's there right now, but you can hear, uh, you know, people when they're inside the office. Click on it. Go back. Okay, this is if you go home, you will be again to this uh, main menu right here. You can click real time monitor and it will automatically connect to the video. Very cool. Let me close the app and you will see what's going to happen. We'll tap that. I'm going to kill all these apps. I'm going to click the MSS light again. It's not going to come up with the cameras right away. So what you do is you go and you use the scroller to connect to your main cameras. There you go. Just as easy as that. Very cool feature right there. You can put it like this and you can see a portrait and all your menus will be there. You got the PDZ here, PDZ menu. If you click on this one, you will go back to uh, where you have your device list and you can add other cameras if you want to. You know, it will kill the camera that is previously, uh, previously playing right now and add the new camera that you're adding to. Click real time monitor to go back. It's a very friendly uh, software. It's very easy to use. Uh, let me go back from home. You can see here under favorites, I already have my new two favorites that I create. And, uh, you know, those are the cameras you want. You can edit them if you want to. You know, you can check or uncheck the cameras you want to put in your favorites. Go back home. You got local configuration. This is the PTZ step speed. So if you have a PTZ camera, you can basically have the camera move at a certain speed. You can increase it by scrolling like this. Also, you will see protection, like you can type a password every time that you open the software, it will ask for a password. Go home, and then the help, basically when you click help, I mean, it will show you how to add your cameras and some of the menus that you will find in there. Okay, now the next step is uh, connect to my DVR, the same DVR, but when I'm outside the network. So I have multiple connections, as I mentioned before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my phone. I can either turn off the Wi-Fi and use the 3G connection, or if you have multiple connections within the same network, but they are completely separate from each other, you can do that as well using the Wi-Fi. Of course, using Wi-Fi is going to be a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to click my Wi-Fi connection again, and I'm going to choose something different, let's say this Tech Pro 2. Okay, once I'm done, just go ahead and open the software. And now this time, I'm going to use the Office Away. Let me make sure I can change this. So go to real time monitor, <coughs> plus office away, and there you go. Now, remember I created different groups before. The groups I create 
we're using the office in, so it's going to be different. So now you have to create new groups when you are um, outside the network. So again, just open your cameras you want. You move the cameras around however you want them. Let's say I want it like that, so I can click the start again of the favorite, and I can add this, for example, I can be uh, on, uh, let's call this one main cams away. Okay, so then I can go there, and uh, right now what it's going to try to do is going to try to connect to the previous group. Right now, remember that previous group was uh, using the internal IP, so that's not going to work. You see it says connection failed. So if you scroll back again, you should be able to connect to, uh, it's going to go to the second group and then the last group that I created. So it, this, this is very intuitive, but you have to, you know, don't, don't uh, uh, get yourself in, in, in a situation that you're going to say, oh, it doesn't work. It does work. The only thing is it, the connection that you previously create, you did it on the internal IP. So when you scroll, you will try, you will be connected to, even though if you're outside the network, the, the app is going to try to uh, communicate with the internal IP as well until it, you know, until it fails and then you keep scrolling until you get the external IP or the external connection. But you see it's very easy to use, it's very easy to connect, it's an awesome app, it's on the App Store, it's free, and uh, I hope you like it. I hope this has been informative for you. I would like to thank you for viewing.